G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to a plane that is a little bit quirky. This is the Yak-141, and this is a plane that is a VTOL jet, supersonic, and 12.0. This is a combination that you wouldn't really think would work, particularly for 12.0, where the top speeds are fairly regularly seen at 1300 kilometers an hour, and planes can climb up to 10,000 meters in about three seconds, and of course you have the infamous missiles such as the AIM-7M and the AIM-9L, as well as the R-27ER at play. But this particular plane, for some odd reason, really thrives at 12.0. I just find that this plane is extremely enjoyable to fly. Now, what we're doing here is we're equipping ourselves with some interesting missiles. We're not going to take any R60s because they see one flare and decide to go for that instead. So we're going to equip ourselves here with two R27Ts. These are sort of medium range, decently well pulling, but the idea here is to sneak up in, on your opponents. And of course we have the R27ERs for those long range standoff engagements because of course at the end of the day the person who wins these engagements is the one with the biggest stick and the biggest stick in game at the moment is the R27ER. Um, I actually think it is the longest missile, do correct me of course, uh, maybe the ground based missiles are a little bit longer but of course we don't really need to compensate for anything here because this plane is a bit of a stick in itself. The uh, Yak-141 is a plane that is really, really quirky. It's got two lift fans at the front, right behind the pilot, and these give you VTOL capabilities as well as that uh, vectored thrust. So, you know, think Yak-38, think uh, the F-35. It's basically got the same lift capabilities as that, um, but it combines it with a really, really weird package. This plane accelerates extremely well. It's got those four missiles, and of course it's supersonic. So you have a lot of opportunities to actually make some interesting plays with this plane. Now, this F4S is gonna be unlucky enough to receive an R27T. The R27T pulls fairly well, and despite the flares, we are still able to get the kill there. So I'm gonna do what this plane does best and uh, sort of skirt around and, and use that energy. But of course, I've got a missile in the uh, R27ER that I should probably find a use for in a head-on situation, and the head-on is probably going to be the best here. I'm going to lock using that head-mounted display, and we're going to get ourselves an R27ER on the way. It's going to be sent beautifully, and makes a very nice kill there on the F16. We're going to try and get ourselves a kill here on that F4S. Look at that beautiful early pull on the R27, and uh, it pretty much makes its home fairly easily. The R27T is somewhat resistant to flares, and that's why I tend to pick it over the R60, despite the R60's extreme ability to maneuver in close ranges, because one flare will make that maneuvering maneuver out of the way of the enemy jet exhaust and straight into a flare or straight to the sun, which is frankly suboptimal. Now, this F4S is also coming in towards us, and that is also suboptimal, because this plane, whilst being a fairly capable aircraft, lacks a little bit of that low speed dogfighting because if you take a look at this plane it's not really a large wing area the wing area is quite small and despite the amount of thrust that you can provide it's still not as much as someone who's held onto all of that energy in a single turn you'll find that with this plane you can end up with an energy deficit extremely easily and you have to be extremely careful that you don't get caught out in a situation where you have no more speed so preserving your speed is extremely important in this plane because it is practically the only way that you will get yourself out of a shitty situation and that is by not being in a shitty situation in the first place and we're going to kind of demonstrate that with this dogfight here. This is an F4S. The F4S sits at 11.3, and 11.3 versus a 12.0 should really be a sold deal. The F4S shouldn't really be standing a chance if I play my plane properly, but this is probably how not to play the plane. I've decided to muck around a little bit with the VTOL mode. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it in that mode for a start, but you can see that the F4S almost comes around and knocks me in the ass pretty quickly, and now I have to look at the ground that is rapidly approaching me. And by putting it out of that VTOL mode and using that excellent acceleration, I can try and catch up to this F4S, but the F4S has held onto so much energy in its turns that going back from 300 kilometers to 1200 kilometers per hour is pretty much a done deal because by the time I catch up, the F4S will be too far away to even bother. Now, 
the F4S it looks like he is trying to pull off something funny here. He's pulled this turn, and this has allowed me to basically seal the deal here on the uh, on the F4S, despite my terrible aim and um, you know the guns. Speaking of which, is the uh, GSH 32, which is a 30 mil cannon. It's pretty good. Most of the time, I find that my shells do pretty good damage. But in this case here, it looks like they've just let me down a little bit. And, you know, I make it up with another quick little burst, giving me kill number four. This plane has enormous potential. And this is the one thing I really, really like about it. It's just depends on how you play it. You can come out with whatever outcome you want, really, as long as you don't kill off your energy super early. And giving yourself those missiles, you can take two R27ERs, but of course you can always take four R27Ts, you can take R27Rs, you don't have to take, you know, one missile type, of course, you've got those custom loadouts, and that's what I'm going to do here, again, R27ERs, and then the two R27Ts, unfortunately, uh, what I'm aiming at is, must have been a bot, that's an accident. Uh, I, I obviously wouldn't recommend that you do that because that is an enormous waste of a missile. Now, I am locking here with the other R27ER. And of course, the R27ER, I seem to get better luck with it at extreme ranges. We're talking 20 kilometers down to 10 kilometers or sort of within six kilometers. They tend to be my best times that I have with it. Every other time, I don't know what happens. Uh, something something just goes awry. Uh, but I find that that is the best time to use these missiles. And, you know, your mileage may vary. But do let me know in the comments if I am, uh, you know, on the money or if I'm onto something. So this match does start off pretty damn slow. It's just the way that this map goes. We have a lot of enemies that are sort of trundling around the external parts of the map. And, of course, the allies are doing the exact same thing. And you can see there from the contrails that we are going to have a high altitude battle in a moment but we're just going to sort of shadow them with the radar keep an eye on them and see what pops up anything that pops up below that is going to be a threat and of course i can sort of spot something using the rwr and uh, we're going to turn around and try and engage that so doing so i don't know i can't seem to find it i've spotted the dot and it is probably an f14 uh, you know seeing all those missiles go out I'm going to take a guess and say they're Phoenixes. And at the 7 kilometer mark, we have finally got a lock. And he's uh, not really interested in us. So I'm not going to waste the missile. I might pursue, see if I can use an R27T instead. At that 4 kilometer mark, he's coming in pretty close. So if he doesn't flare, I'm going to get myself a very easy kill. And that is a fairly done deal. But that does leave him with only two R27s. Uh, sorry, R27Ts left. So it uh, looks like I did use the R27ER, my mistake. But, you know, I think the R27T would have been a better deal here because he was just sort of flying away. You know, that 100 kilometer or 100 meter per second uh, closure distance was not very satisfactory to me. Um, and in retrospect, maybe I should have because the R27T is a lot less suited for a head-on engagement. Of course, if the enemy can see the missile coming, they're more likely to flare it. And this F-14 is well, was going to be the victim, but now I'm in a bit of a pickle here. We have F-14s, we have uh, Yak-141s, 130, well, we have a Vigan, we have an F-16, and all of these guys, there's no way that I can take them all, because there's just too many missiles, too many guns, and of course too many wings supporting those to really thin the numbers adequately. So I need to employ some teammates here. The uh, Yak-141 looks like he's going to be the victim of another missile, but just dodges that in the nick of time. It seems like this F-14 is, uh, is hungry for flares, hungry for uh, missiles. I'm going to send two missiles. One of them strikes. This leaves me with only one kill to show for two for, for two missiles. And again, this is suboptimal. I have four enemies on my six. I'm going to need some help really, really quickly. I've gone into the vertical here. and The, the Vigan is coming in quickly. The F-16 is coming in quickly. And now I've spotted a guy that is a little bit slow and low in energy, which is a perfect time for me to strike this F-16. It's coming up pretty high. I've taken some damage at the tail, but I managed to kill him in a very last second head-on. Got a missile coming in. I'm going to pop some quick flares. The Russian flares are just so beautiful. But this F-16 is going to come in. It's going to be really, really tight. I'm dodging trees. And again, we are at an energy deficit. I'm at 400 kilometers an hour. There's not much that I can really do. I just need to spray, pray, and try and hold on to the little energy that I've got in the hope that someone comes and saves me. And uh, it's going to be a really tall order. 
provided that someone doesn't get uh, killed here. But this F4EJ has come and saved my bacon, killing the Vigan. Uh, this leaves the F14, which is killed again. This is really, really good news for me, which just leaves me here with this F16, who is uh, pretty much the only major threat here. But of course, I've bled so much speed. The F16 has so much acceleration that it's really not a competition. The F16 is just going to run away from me forever and ever. And there's really no point in me chasing. I'm hoping that the F4EJ has got some missiles, but I'm pretty sure that he's only down to one or two. I think I message him here in the chat, ask him if he's got anything to, you know, yeet along at him, maybe to hope that he's got no flares left. Uh, but at the end of the day, we are both slower than him. And you can see the real limitations of the Yak-141 coming to play. Uh, this plane is just not fast. It's just, that's its limitation. Uh, and of course, it bleeds energy like you wouldn't believe. It does have a really good climb rate, as you can see here. And of course, on the stat card, it says 300 meters a second, which is about the same as the F-16 and a little less than the MiG-29. But, you know, that is not going to cut it in a level chase engagement. So I'm just going to cut the throttle and trundle back over to base because that's really all there is left for this particular match. The F-16 and there's a couple of other enemies, but we really need to, you know, gather some missiles. This is the only way that we're really going to get some kills and make an impact in the battle. So that's exactly what we do. There's a MiG-29 in play. It looks like he might be going for Sabres, which is an excellent... It's just a stellar move. Imagine wasting your missiles on perfectly good targets. But we have an RWR lock in front of us. And just because we're getting beaded all the time, we are going to sort of dip below that uh, cliff line. It's just beautiful using the hills and the terrain to stave off these these radar locks. And hopefully this is going to provide a little bit of an advantage in the long run. Although I can't spot an enemy myself and that little mark cloud is not doing me any favors. So I'm going to lock this MiG-29. I'm going to yeet an R-27ER, but it looks like he's just made that right move at the right time and has evaded the R-27ER. That is a heavy missile. That is the main trade-off. And the MiG-29 does get absolutely yeeted by an AIM-7, which means that there is only one enemy left, and it's that F-16 from before. Now, you might be thinking that this is going to be a fairly easy battle because the R-27ER is an exceptionally good missile. But of course, missiles are only pretty much as good as the radar attached to them. So if you put the R-27ER on the uh, Yak-28 radar, I believe it's the, the jet bomber, that big bomber, uh, it's going to do fuck all. It's going to do sweet fuck all, and you're going to have a really hard time getting any kills because you have no pulse Doppler capability, the filtration is terrible, uh, and of course the uh, power, the, the, the sheer energy of the radar is just not there. So uh, we just have to sort of make do with the radar that we've got, and I'm just going to hope that I get a good closing distance. That's the only thing that I can really hope for and hope that the radar holds its lock but you can see that it's just not holding its lock as it follows the terrain there so I'm going to send an R27T and it's just not going to like rain true because the uh, F-16 has switched off his afterburner and deployed flares and that leaves me with one missile for one kill it just looks like I'm not really going to get much out of this unless I go for the guns and the F-16 is pretty heavy heavily loaded so maybe I can sit behind him he can jet away, and of course, I can keep up with his climb, so there's not a whole lot he can do there. If he's evading, he's going to be bleeding that energy as well, and I just think that I might have the advantage here. I go for the guns, and I get an easy kill. It might be because he, uh, maybe he knew me, maybe he was uh, encouraged by his team to just throw, or maybe he just saw no hope against two enemies, but at the end of the day, it kills a kill, and I think I'm going to take that. So, moving on to this particular match, this is where the Yak shines. I think this particular scenario, this particular matchup was a, it's an absolute banger of a match, let's be honest. So I'm looking for enemies that are heading towards me and the Kurnas here, um, I can't remember what a Kurnas is, I think it's the, the Phantom, the F4 Phantom. He's uh, got a missile that is heading out towards someone, which means he's pretty preoccupied. That R27ER is going to strike very, very easily and this MiG-23 is going to become the next victim because again, look at the closure rate. If it's above 300, then uh, you're pretty much going to go for gold here. I thought that missile was going for the MiG, um, which it Maybe it was, but it just does some funny shit and it ends up being really suboptimal for me. Well, this one is definitely going to strike home. We No misses here, but the downside is we're down to one missile and it's just the beginning of the match. So uh, this is where the major limitations of this plane come into effect. You just don't have the killing power that other jets do, but you do have a fair bit of 
sort of dogfighting power. Provided that a lot of enemies are concentrated in a small area, you can actually pull off some really interesting maneuvers here and get some interesting kills. This MiG-23 is not paying attention and again will pay the repair cost. This MiG-21 looks like he's closing the distance but he's pretty damn slow so he could potentially be a really easy kill but I just can't quite line up the shot. There's a Kronas and a Tornado and the both of those planes look like they're going to be bomb and it out. It looks like they're heading for a base. So uh, I'm just going to head towards them as a kill of opportunity. But of course, I can't really focus my attention on all of them all the time. Just in case that uh, AIM-9L comes out. The Kronas, I'm not really sure what he's doing. I'm, I'm pretty confident now that he's bomb and uh, and he must be loaded with bombs, which is going to make him a fairly easy target. I probably could have prioritized something else, uh, something that's a little bit more valuable. But of course, having no missiles... Uh, Maybe the easy target was not such a bad idea. After all, going for a quick shot there, fireball, very easy. And the MiG-21 is probably going to be the next target here of opportunity because he is just so close. This uh, tornado is also closing the distance and it looks like we've pretty much thinned out the numbers of highly competitive planes. Uh, this is also a down tier. Do note that uh, this is the best case scenario. Now, the Tornado is a terrible dogfighter, it's a terrible plane in general, and I will be making a video on the F3 very shortly. The MiG-21, it can stand up to this plane, probably, uh, and it is a little bit faster. It doesn't have the climb rate, but, you know, there are trade-offs. This plane has better missiles, though. Uh, so, in a, in a gunfight, yeah, somewhat even, but in a missile fight, it is pretty much bringing a knife to a gunfight on the MiG-21's part. So, we're going to close the distance here with this MiG-23 instead. Uh, because he seems to be, again, another target of opportunity. And this is exactly where the Yak-141 strikes best, where you have lots of targets that are, you know, somewhat low in energy and are easily able to be killed by these guns because the 30 mil does a really, really good job of killing. It's a very solid gun. Uh, and the missiles are extremely solid, provided that the enemy isn't paying many attention. Uh, this is a very... This is like a perfect storm for this type of thing. Uh, not that... Any other plane could do that just as well, but I feel like the Yak-141 has a special ability to do that, particularly with its guns. So if you can get lots of gun kills, or if you if you need lots of gun kills, this is a particularly good plane to do so, because it just has the, the, the velocity, it's got the acceleration, uh, and of course it can turn and burn if you need it to. And again, if your opponent is starting to get away, you can send a missile, an R27T or even the R27ER if you really desire. And this J7D is going to learn the hard way. Not really because I can't line up the shots once again. Going for those high angle deflection shots is kind of what the MiG-21 is really, really good for. But of course the GAC-141 is also good because it turns and burns. And I've just been able to turn and burn just a little bit better. Go for that last second head on and it does pan out to be you know, somewhat successful. Not that I think that the last minute head-on is a good idea. I think it's quite stupid, but in an environment where there are five enemy planes and, sorry, five allied planes and one enemy plane, uh, the best solution here is just to do whatever the fuck you want, really. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Yak-141. I actually think it's a really impressive plane. It's quite fun to fly. It just has a good combination of things that make it work out for it. So, ladies and gents, if you enjoyed the video, do let me know in the comment section below because I greatly appreciate everything. Uh, thank you for sticking around. I apologize for another long sort of gap between videos. I hope to be back on the horse very, very soon, but until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.